Hi Year 4, this is Miss Flukes. I uh, hope you're all well and getting on with your home learning. Today this video is going to talk to you about the writing task for this week, um, about what you need to do um, and how to achieve the learning intention really. So the learning intention for this week is to be able to write from another character's perspective. Okay, and to achieve your learning intention, the success criteria includes to write in first person because you're writing as a character, so you're becoming that character. Um, you need to include frontis adverbials, descriptive language, and Alan Pete's three ED sentences. Now, I'll go into a bit more detail uh, with those a bit later on in the video. So, as I said, you're writing from another character's perspective. Um, this is going to be based on a short film, okay? Now, the film can be found on the website. If you want to pause the video now and take a look at the video, um, you may do so because it might make a bit more sense for the rest of the video. So I suggest pausing the video now and looking for the video on the website. It's called Octopodi and it's about two octopuses. I'm not going to give away any more spoilers. So go take a look at it now um, and then the rest of the video should make a bit more sense. So I hope you were able to have a quick look at the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and now we're going to talk about what kind of the guideline is for you to do this week in terms of your writing task. Now it's just a guideline, um, so you don't um, need to do it on the days we say, you can do it when you want to, it's just a suggestion of when you could do it, okay? So we suggest that on Monday, so today, you watch a video, which you should have already done, um, probably watch it a few times, I'd say, and then you're going to brainstorm your ideas. OK, so bearing in mind you're going to be writing from the orange octopus's perspective. You're going to just brainstorm your ideas all about that. OK, now, as you can see, I for my waggle, I wrote from the pink um, octopus's perspective. So I brainstormed it in terms of the pink octopus. OK, and you can see on my um, brainstorm kind of my mind map that I just include included what happened and put some adjectives on there which I thought I might use and things like that and that really helped me because it just laid out my ideas you don't need to do that but if it helps then go for it or if you want to do it in a different format then that's absolutely fine you may also want to come up with a name for each octopus um, just because it's a bit easier and it's a bit less confusing rather than going to pink octopus orange octopus um, I named the pink one pinky for obvious reasons and the orange one I named Hank because it reminded me of Hank from Finding Dory, if any of you have seen that. So yeah, there you go. You don't have to name them if you don't want to, but I suggest you do just so it's easier and you have the fun of coming up with a name then. So let's move on to Tuesday. So this is when you're going to be planning your piece of writing. OK, now um, I have created just like a simple writing plan format for you. You don't have to use it again. Um, if there's another way you'd rather plan your writing, then that's absolutely fine. Um, however, you do need to think about what happens in the character, um, what, sorry, what happens to the character in the short film. Um, so you can, you know what you're writing about. You need to think about what descriptive language you're going to be using, uh, whether that's similes, onomatopoeias, exciting adjectives. Um, think about which fronted adverbials you might use. Um, I know the fronted adverbials word mat is on the website so you can use that to help you and also some three ed sentences which you could use okay really show off to me in your writing that you can use the alan pete sentences because they really do make your writing a lot better okay so like i said you don't need to use this plan and format you can print it off if you um, have a printer at home but don't worry if you don't you can literally just write this out on a piece of paper draw four boxes and just write up your ideas okay it's just a plan so it doesn't need to be your neatest piece of work okay it's just for you to um, have ready for your writing tomorrow on well on the Wednesday okay so on Wednesday you're going to write up your piece of writing okay now you do have your success criteria for your learning intention if you want to check what else you should be including on the website there's also a link to um, the year for success criteria which you should be using as well so all the things in black, which you can see here, are things you definitely should be using already. The green things are the things you should you should be using most of the time. And the blue things are things you should start 
trying to use okay so they're kind of like your challenges if you want a bit of a challenge okay so take a look at that if you want to um see what else you should be including in your writing it's really quite useful because it breaks it down um so you can see what you definitely need to be including in your writing okay so that's wednesday writing up your piece of writing thursday you're going to be editing and improving your piece of work so that's just like we would do in school um, as we've written up our final piece. You would get a purple pen, edit and improve it. I mean, if you have a purple pen at home, go for it. If not, then just use a normal pen or pencil and just really go through your work and check whether you've got all your spellings right, whether you're using commas after your front adverbials correctly and just little things like that, really. What I find really helps me is reading it out loud. OK, so read it out loud to yourself or to a parent who's at home or a brother or sister, anyone who's at home. Just read it to them. OK, just even if they're not listening, you reading it out out loud, you realise some mistakes that you may not have noticed before. So that's a really good thing to do. Um, also, think about improving your work. So if there's an adjective you use, such as small, you look at the alternative adjective sheet and think, oh, what other word can I use instead of small to make it better? OK, now I know you don't have the lovely laminated sheets which are in the classroom at home normally. However, I have put the link up to the um, alternative adjective sheets on the website so you can use it online. So there's no excuse. OK, you should be using um, exciting adjectives. OK, I don't want to see big, small. You need to be using really good, exciting adjectives to really grip the reader. OK, and also I'm going to put a link up to an online dictionary and thesaurus. So if you're not sure about a spelling, uh, you'll be able to look it up online in the dictionary or if you want to find a better word, then you can use a thesaurus to improve your work as well. OK, so Friday, you're going to rewrite your final piece to publish. OK, so when I say publish, it just means um, sending it to me to put on the website, basically, OK, to show it to the world. So you can either take a picture of it and ask a parent to email it to me, or you can even read it yourself and record yourself reading it and then send that to me. Obviously, you need to check with a parent first because they will need to email it to me. But either one I'm happy with and I will be publishing these on the website. OK, so you can all have a look at each other's. Um, so that'd be really good if you don't want to rewrite your final piece to publish you may do the challenge okay now the challenge for this week is to write a short piece of descriptive writing on the location of the video okay there's another pdf all about the challenge if you want to take a look at that you um only need to do one or the other so you either rewrite your final piece of writing so i say i for example if you made a lot of improvements and edited quite a lot of your first copy i would say rewrite it however if there wasn't much for you to improve on or edit then there's not much point in you rewriting it so i would say do the challenge okay but it's up to you whatever you feel more comfortable doing um but if you fancy a challenge then go for it okay that'd be really good if you really want to do both you may do both as well okay but there's no pressure to do so um so let's just kind of recap um what the learning intention was so hopefully you've seen the video by now of octopodi so you are writing from the orange octopus's perspective okay based on the short film which you should have seen so i have written a waggle for you to have a look at just to show you kind of the expectation of what i'm wanting to see in your writing um, however i have written mine as the perspective of the pink octopus okay so you can obviously use my ideas from it and you can magpie um pieces of um, my writing i'm more than happy to do for you to do that however it's from the pink octopus's perspective so it will be a bit different to your piece of writing okay and remember to give your octopuses names because it gets a bit confusing like i said i have named the orange octopus hank because it reminds me of the uh, orange octopus from Finding Dory. So the waggle, let's have a little look. So the uh, front of verbials are in green. The descriptive language is all in red and any three ED sentences, which I have put in are in blue. OK, so you can really clearly see what I've included in my writing. OK, now this um, isn't on the whole thing. OK, this is just kind of a snippet of the actual short film okay if you want to just choose part of the short film to write about from the orange octopus's perspective that's absolutely fine um 
quality over quantity, okay? I wouldn't want you to write loads and it not be very good, okay? I'd much rather you write a few paragraphs, like one or two paragraphs, which are really, really good, rather than lots and lots which aren't very good, okay? So have a think. You can write about the whole story if you want from the orange octopus's perspective, but if you just want to write about a section of it, maybe the beginning part or the end part, then just write about that and make sure it's really good quality, okay? So I will reframe my waggle um, and we will have a discussion about it at the end. So, as I was gazing lovingly into Hank's expressive emerald eyes, I was suddenly captured. Without warning, I was taken from Hank's tentacles and put onto a stone cold surface, where I was then crammed into a tiny box. However, before I was shoved into the box, I caught one last glimpse of Hank's striking green eyes. Terrified, petrified and frightened, I started to panic. Where was I going? Where is Hank? What is going to happen to me? Questions filled my head as the dark, dingy box began to feel like it was getting smaller and smaller. I was wondering how much longer I could stand being inside such an enclosed space when suddenly a glimpse of light appeared into the box, followed by a long, slimy orange tentacle. Hank, I thought, overjoyed, thrilled and delighted. I couldn't believe Hank had come to save me. I soon realised that I was inside a car and noticed that Hank was trying to stop the driver. Bravely, I leaped out of the box and pulled as hard as I could on the handbrake. All of a sudden, the car made an ear-piercing jolt, sending me flying out the window. I luckily landed on a nearby wall, yet I couldn't see Hank. Where was he? Anxiously, I peered down the wall and found Hank on the road. In the blink of an eye, as I helped Hank onto the wall, the driver was coming straight at us. Okay, so that's my waggle. That's I'm not obviously saying it's perfect or anything, but that's kind of the expectation. Remember, a waggle stands for what a good one looks like. Okay, so that is the kind of quality I'm expecting from you. So lots of um, descriptive language. Okay, some good front verbials, and um, if you can, some three ED sentences. All right, and at, uh, like I said in the success criteria, um, it is first person because it is from a character's perspective. So you've got to pretend you are the orange octopus, okay? You've got to think, think about how you're feeling, about what's happened, about how you feel about the pink octopus being taken away, all those kind of things you need to be thinking about when you're doing your writing, okay? Um, so when you have a look at this, you also need to think about how you split up your paragraphs, okay? Because that's also quite an important factor as well. So you can start to do that in your plan on um, Tuesday. When you plan out, you can think about what you're going to put in each paragraph as well. OK, so um, let's go on to the next one. So enjoy your writing. Remember, you're writing from the oranges, orange octopus's perspective, not the pink one. OK, um, I think I've included everything. Obviously, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, it's m.flukes at sdps.plymouth.sch.uk. Um, but yes, I think it's all pretty straightforward. On the website, there should be um, a fronted adverbials word map you can use. The um, alternative adjective sheet, I'm going to put a link up to an online thesaurus and dictionary which you can use. Um, all the planning formats will be up there. Um, so yeah it should all be there if i've missed anything then please let me know and i will look forward to reading your um, pieces of writing when you're finished enjoy <laughs>